Alright guys, how's it going? Uh, this is Wallace here and you're watching A3 Academy and today's topic is going to be buoyancy. So uh, let's get started right quick. So we know that if we submerge an object in water, uh, sometimes that object will float back up to the surface of the water. Uh, this is true for any fluid and this is known as buoyancy. To be able to explain buoyancy, we need to know how pressure works in fluids. So we know that because of gravity, the pressure uh, at the top of a fluid is lower than it is at the bottom. In other words, there's higher pressure when you move downward in a fluid. We can apply this to objects that are submerged in fluid. Since there's higher pressure as you move downward in a fluid, there's going to be higher pressure below the object and a lower pressure above the object. That is going to result in a net upward force, which we call the buoyant force. Now there's a special technique we can use when we want to calculate the buoyant force that is acting on an object. That is called Archimedes Principle. And Archimedes Principle states that the buoyant force exerted on a submerged object in a fluid is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. So we're going to show you quickly how to calculate the buoyant force using Archimedes Principle. Suppose that we submerged an object with a volume of 3 cubic meters underwater. How do you calculate the buoyant force that's acting on this object? Well, the first thing we know is that this object displaces water that is equal to its own volume. That means that it displaces 3 meters cubed of water. So the volume of water that's being displaced is 3 meters cubed. Now we know that the density of water is 1000 kilograms per cubic meter. Knowing that density is mass over volume, we can calculate the mass of water by multiplying the volume and the density to get 3,000 kilograms of water displaced. And finally, knowing that the weight is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity, and we know that the acceleration due to gravity is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, we can calculate that the weight is equal to 3,000 times 9.8 which is equal to 29,400 newtons. So we've calculated the weight of H2O displaced, which is 29,400 newtons. Therefore, by Archimedes' principle, the buoyant force is going to be equal to the weight of the water displaced. Therefore, the buoyant force is also going to be 29,400 newtons. So the water, by the buoyant force, is going to be pushing up on the object with a force of 29,400 newtons. Now, suppose that an object was floating freely on the water. Now, we know that whenever an object is floating freely on some sort of fluid, the downward force of gravity is counteracted by the upward buoyant force, meaning that they are equal in number. So, for example, if we know that the weight of the object is, say, 50 newtons, we can easily calculate the volume of the object that's underwater. Here's how you do it. So, we know that the weight of the object is 50 newtons, and since the object's floating freely on the water, that means that the buoyant force cancels it out, which means that there's 50 newtons of buoyant force. Now that we know the magnitude of the buoyant force, we can go backwards and calculate the volume of water that's displaced. The weight of displaced water is 50 newtons. Now we know that weight is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity, which means that we can divide 50 by 9.8 meters per second squared to find the mass of the displaced water, 5.1 kilograms. And since we know the density of water, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, we can find the volume of displaced water simply by dividing mass by density. That will give us 0.0051 cubic meters, which is the same as 51 cubic centimeters. Therefore, we absolutely know that there is 51 cubic centimeters of the object that are underwater. Archimedes' principle is also responsible for the fact that an object with a density greater than water will always sink, while an object with a density less than that of water will always float. So that's the basics of buoyancy. Uh, we've covered a couple basic problems, and we've talked about Archimedes' principle. So. That's all for today. I'm Wallace from A3 Academy, and as always, the more you know, the better you are.